So this is the story of a sad Raspberry Pi Zero. I use these for quite a few different things. There's a couple videos that I've made on one project in particular. That project got to a point where I was making a custom circuit board for it. This is the first revision of it. One of the things that I discovered when I put on this header, which is intended to mount the Raspberry Pi Zero just directly in there like this, was that I didn't have any guides keeping myself from accidentally uh, plugging it in the wrong way. And I'm not really sure how I even would have done that. Anyways, that's what happened. I was putting this in, I missed by a row, or is that a column? However it is. And put three point, whoops, and put 3.3 volts on the five volt rail on the poor Raspberry Pi. And a bunch of other things because everything was shifted over by a pin and ground became <laughs> some voltage and it made the Raspberry Pi unhappy and it was no longer operational. What I noticed was that when I was trying to recover it, I was trying to get the SD card out of it and, and see if I could get it to come back to life, even though I wouldn't really trust it for anything that was requiring any sort of reliability, it started to get really hot. And not only did it start to get really hot, but it was drawing a ton of power. And so I was surprised. So I tried, I, I'm, I'm deliberately not showing the other side of this Raspberry Pi um, for reasons which you will discover in a second. So I'll get this one out of the way, the good one. Well, actually I'll keep it in for a second. Cause what I was trying to do was remove the heat sink. I was like, well, at least I can save the heat sink. And it was getting so hot. I did it while the thing was still on. It delaminated. It, delam it delaminated the package on package. I ended up pulling off part of the RAM. <laughs> so this is what it looks like now. And uh, that's kind of sad. So you can see that the heatsink came off and then the, it like ripped off part of the memory, I believe. And that's actually what you're seeing below there is the Broadcom, whatever it is, the BCM 2835. I'm gonna go with that as a guess and correct myself if I'm way off. And I think that's it down below. So what's on top is the RAM and then below this is the BCM 2835. So anyway, I just wanted to show a couple things. Show its power consumption, which is insane. Cause it's, I mean, not surprising. I have to put it on a three amp battery bank. So it has to be on like the old power core pluses. And I need to get a good cable cause it won't, it, it, otherwise it gets really cranky because it's just way too much current being drawn by it. After the frustration and the anger at myself for just skipping pins when I was kind of in a rush putting this together, you know, getting it together, you learn from your mistakes. And I do notice that part of the ferrite cracked off on that inductor. Anyways, I'll plug it in and you'll see it. Oh, actually, it, I think it just tripped. Did it just trip? Oh, wow. This one usually can handle it. I might need to get, no. Oh, I can smell it. I want to get it on a thermal camera. I'm going to have to, wow, I was working on this before. I think, oh man, that stinks. Wow. I don't know if there's any smoke coming off of it, but it is really, really un, Ooh, that smells just nasty. It's strange because it was working before. I was able to get it to, I was able to, to demonstrate it. It's a bummer. There we go. Oh man, just for a second. It's on, it's on. I think it's, eh, it's crapping out. Crud. Oh crap, I don't, why was it on that screen? No, go back to the other screen. I think it's still supplying power. I think this is just folding back and it's cutting this out because it's going too low. Because this is getting really hot. Oh God, yeah, that's hot. Maybe these will work. Oh, these are brand new. These will go up to, I think, three. It says three amps per port, but I think this goes up to 18. This will actually support 18 watts charging. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it'll let it go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it cut out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know if they caught that on camera. Let's try again. It's not cutting out the thermal protection. No, it just... Hmm. 
All right, there it is. Plug it in and see if we get anything. There you go, 14 watts, 14, see that? It's really, really high. And <laughs> that's way higher. I don't know if this is still on. No, this one caught out. I think this one caught out. Because that's not getting hot, yeah. But the anchor one, I think, stays on and it's allowing it to continue to, to operate. Just smells horrid, because the lights stay on. They don't, they're not t turning off. So what I thought I would do is put under the thermal imaging camera and we could just take a view of this thing as it's operating and see its behavior over time and see how hot it gets. So let's switch to that now. Okay, so here is the setup. We've got the Raspberry Pi down here, the sad Raspberry Pi, and I've got the spot right over the system on chip. Well, what's left of it. And then there's two there's two spots. There's the one that's highlighted in bold that or it's more bold that is right over the chip. And then the one that's kind of off in the corner here is on the silicon mat. Okay, here we go, plugging it in. Oh wow. Wow. We're up to 70 degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Celsius, 90. 95. Let me get it a little bit more centered on where I'm seeing the hot spot. We're at 120. This is probably an 85C. Well, I think this one kind of regulates about 85C. And yeah, and you can see off in the corner there, sorry that the numbers are kind of in the way, but you can see that the buck boost converter is getting kind of warm. Sorry, I'm pointing at my finger. I can smell it now. 130. Seems to be hanging around 130. Not too much higher. The battery pack is not cutting out. A trusty power core. 138. I'm just curious how hot it's going to get up to. Again, if we get up to 200 degrees, then I'm going to stop the test because 200 degrees Celsius, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now we're at 140 Celsius, which is pretty hot. 140 Celsius to Fahrenheit is 284 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're still climbing. 139, I think we're hanging out about 140 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. I think there's enough, it's not pumping in enough. Oh, I can smell it. Man, it's not great. But you can see how the board is taking on quite a bit of the heat, how it's spreading it around. And while the 75% of the system on chip that is there is getting quite hot, the rest of the circuit board you can see is starting to pick up some of that, you know, it's it's spreading that heat across the ground planes and stuff. It's still climbing, 144, it's kind of hanging around 144. Battery pack is not getting hot at all. You can see the battery pack is actually just barely in shot. Oop, no it's not. Yeah, it is. It's, it's in the lower left corner. And there's the cable. You can just make out the outline of the cable with the camera. Yeah, it seems to be kind of hanging out at 100 and not saying greater than 150. Why did it just give up? At the max that it will go, oh, it's really starting to smell. Oh. Why does it say greater than 150? I thought this could go higher than that. Uh, have we maxed out the the range on this? 150, 302 Fahrenheit. No, it has to be a higher range than that. I can hear it. It's crackling. I thought it would go, man, it's really getting, it's really getting hot now. And it's smelling. I'm gonna need to vent this place out when I'm done with that. It's probably not good to be breathing this. I'm gonna temporarily pause this so I can get the actual measurements. Just a moment. I think it was because I had it set. There's the two different ranges that the, the this thing can operate in. One is the low range, one is the high temperature range. And I had it in the low temperature range. So I think that may have limited it. 
to 150 degrees Celsius because it can go way higher than that. So let's crank it back up again. Oh man, you can see that corner. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it cut out. <laughs> you can see that it cut out. The, po the power supply shut off. That's funny. You can see right in the upper corner. You can see exactly where it starts to heat up. Let me try one more time. I don't like the power supply is liking me. There it goes. There it goes. 160, 170, 180, 190. We're right on the hot spot now, 213. And I feel like a dead short's happening at some point. And then it's cooling back off. Where is that at? It's right up at the top. Yeah, it seems to cool off. But man, that really climbs. The rest of the board doesn't seem to... Let me move the other. Let's just get it somewhere on the board. Just below it. 100 degrees Celsius. The board's probably rated 130 for fire. 105 or 130, so it's pretty much at the maximum... But that, it seems to be settling back down like we saw before at around 140. I'm going to disconnect it. And we're going to cool it down one more time. And I'm going to try just for one more. One more test. Just to see what we can get it up to. Here we go. I don't want to be abusing my battery pack too much, but it seems to be all right with it. Here we go. Seems to occur in different spots. And now it's kind of across the middle. 127 degrees Celsius. I think that crosshair might be slightly off board there. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere nearly as, near as high as we were before. Back in the visible light world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.